Hello friends, welcome to all of you. Today in the video, I am going to tell you how you can use the ultimate city generator. You will also know what things you need to keep in mind to use it. Let's start. When you open the file, you will see an interface like this. By deleting this city generator, generate your own city to delete it. You can go to simple edit mode and select vertex or face. Now here, I will add a new plane by pressing Shift A. As soon as you add the plane, you will start seeing buildings. But you will not see the road. You will scale this plane. Only the building will be shown to you. As you scale, the probability of buildings will increase, but still you cannot see the road because it is still single face. As soon as you subdivide this face, the road as well as the open spaces will be filled, so you can see your city has been generated. Now I will tell you how you can generate the city randomly by using different sliders. We will also learn how to combine procedural or non-procedural buildings. Here you are seeing many options. Let us look at all the options one by one. The first option is still in the developing stage. With this option, we can give a low poly look to the city, because in high poly, the simulation will be very slow, which will cause problem in animation. So to work easily, we will be able to convert it into low poly, so that the simulation in the city will become faster. The second option is road lines color. Here we will be able to change the color of the white road line that you see near the sidewalk. So simply you can choose whatever color you want from here. The second option is length between lights. So the length between the lights that you see on the sidewalk is about currently here. The length given here is 20 meters. We increase it to 50 meters. Now the next option is about the length between of the electric line. I show it to you on the outer road curve. Here the space between the electric lines is 20 meters. So I increase it to 50 meters. Then I increase this a little more and make it 80 meters. Now the fourth option is about the floors, which is our skyscrapers building. We can set their floors directly from the option here. This is the bottom part, what should be its maximum floor. We can set it from here. What will be the maximum floor of the immense part? We will set it with this option and similarly, whatever maximum it will be. It will spawn here randomly as per its own. Our next option is roof scattering. So if you have many objects visible on the building, then you can use this option to control it. So here random objects will be spawned as per their own. Now the next option we'll see is upper building probability. I've given this option only for the building skyscraper. With this option, you can make the building that is visible. On it you have a lower part and an upper part. Then should the upper part come on the lower part, or should it not come? It controls. As soon as we zero it, the upper part, which will be on top of the building, will not be visible, which is a respectable type of building, but by default, I have kept the upper part on randomly. Now the next option is light on off. What we can do with this, is that we can turn on or off the street light that you are seeing. So when you make its value on, the lights will go off, and when you make its value zero, the light will turn on. Now what happens in the land probability option is that it will control the open space that is visible in the middle of the city. As you can see that when we increase the open space here in the middle of the city, so the open space will increase and when we reduce it the open space will reduce. You can also use different types of land seeding here. So keep its value and 0.3 so that you get a decent result. Next option is building probability. SO when its value is high then the types of buildings will be visible and when we adjust its value then you will see more random buildings. This is because the face in the middle that you see is open spaces. Here the face has been randomly deleted. So if we increase the probability here then the deleted face does not happen. Then it would have been the mesh island. If it becomes too big then only one type of building is spawned. As you can see, when we are adding values, we are only seeing a single type of building. You can also use the set option 
to spawn different types of buildings and the building threshold. Option to spawn different types of buildings. With the next option, you will be able to control the park zone. When you increase its value, the open space will increase and you will not see trees. Then our next option is tree probability. From this we will calculate the number of trees can increase or decrease R. Now this is a non-procedural option. This option works when the size of the face is larger and the probability of the land is more. The open space is larger. So what will happen if, if there is open space there? If you know non-procedure building, then let me show you how you can control it. So see, as we increase the land probability, you will see that the non-process building will come here. Okay, so keep the size of the face a little more. Only then you will be able to see the non-procedural building. So see, the building has come here. This building. This procedure is not automatic. It is a manual model of the building, which is taken directly here. So if you want the procedure building here, then you can increase its probability. And from the yellow colored building here, this is the procedure building. Here you will see one of its settings below wall color. So the wall color is the color of this building. So whatever color you give here, the color of the building will also be visible to you. And also another option is given below for lighting probability. So if you want to provide lightings in the building, if yes then you can control it from here. Also just notice that there is no lighting here in the building and as I increase its lighting probability you will see lights inside the building in that percentage. In the next option we can control the color of the high-rise building which is random here. Like if I have given the red tone here then the color which is related to the red will come on the random building. If I select green then light green dark green or yellowish color will be automatically generated on this type of building. That is Different colors will automatically come on different buildings. And if it is a building with a normal generator, here you can control the floors as well. How many floors do you want on the lower part? Or how many floors do you want on the upper part? Now, which is the last option? Mountain or landscape? So whatever landscape you want to do, first select it in your file and the object of the landscape here, so that when we generate the city, it automatically adopts it and there is no interruption in whatever is there in your city. Now let me tell you from where you can control the lighting of the building. As soon as you go to the material option here, in the material option you will see different material if you want to control the lighting of the non-procedural building. You have been given a material here, window interior. So this is the value option on window interior. When you slide it, you will be able to control the lighting here. If you are a procedural building, or one with yellow color, you can control its lighting directly from the geometry nodes, and if you are a normal building, you will be able to control its lighting from the material option. There is a material called a K window in the material. You can control the probability from here, whereas if you want to control the lighting of the street light, for this, you will have to go to an item called red. From there you will also be able to change its color. And also you can change the strength of the light. Now let me tell you how you can generate flyovers in your city. So first of all you have to go to edit mode. And by selecting any vertex you can extrude it easily. Now one thing to keep in mind is that if you make flyover near roadways. Then do not take too close to the lower road. Otherwise it will start merging. So keep it a little above it. So your flyover will be easily and very well adopted in the city. And you can also attach it in your landscape and there will be no problem in the landscape too. It will be automatically adopted and in the landscape you can from wherever you want to give a road you can give you can also see there is no problem here in the city even after giving flyovers because wherever the flyover is. It will pass through the building of that place automatically will be deleted. So let me show you here. See this, when you fly from here, 
the building is getting automatically deleted, so you will not face any problem in the city, and you will be able to create flyover easily even inside the city. Now let me tell you the disadvantage in our city. What is the disadvantage in our city? First of all, the disadvantage is that the small houses that are scattered here get intersected at some places. This happens with our buildings because the sum of the house models given to him are small and some are big, so they are not easily controlled. Although we can control it, but it slows down the process a little. So you can keep this thing in mind here. At the same time, let me tell you that you will not get to see the texture of those which are from the internal road. You will only get to see the texture on main road. The disadvantage of this option is that you cannot give an angle face here. Whereas if you want to give an angle face in your city, then the problem will be that the alignment of the windows of our building will get spoiled. Actually, I am adding one option that as soon as the angle face comes, what will happen there is that parks will be automatically generated. Although this option is still in the developing stage, I have not launched it completely yet. It will be added as soon as it is completed. Well, I will give it to you in the next update. Now, there is one more thing here that the angles between the edges should also not be of much less. Advice. What will happen is that there will be a little problem in the window alignment of the building. Now see what problems can arise if we divide the faces more often. Actually, this city generator is so capable that it will easily adopt the face of any shape. Will it just have to be on the side face of the vertex? If the number increases, the shape in our building will deteriorate a little. Sometimes what will happen is that if the size of the face is small, then there may be a problem in the building. But if the size of the face is sufficient, then whatever will be our building will hence adopt its shape. Now see as I am here in subdivision. If I am increasing it, you can see what problems we are facing. The length between the roads will also be reduced significantly, that is, the width of the road will be reduced and your city will not be visible properly. So as far as possible, keep your face square. If you make it rectangular, keep only three quarters of its fibers. Keeping more fibers than this can cause problems, because shape of building will be rectangular and the window alignment in the small building will be a little spoiled. So by keeping these few points in mind, you can generate a very good city here. And if you can do it in your animation, then wherever you do it, please tell me. I will share those things. Thank you so much.